Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Wood, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord hyphen oracle.com that's odd hyphen oracle.com now as you come to the front page of tfnn folks our man mr tim odd you're going to see it right under featured content and tim's going to be doing a webinar for us okay so the last webinar he did uh bottom line it was all about uh, what, what the ratios were when he's looking for bottoms well guess what what we're going to do out here the secret science of market tops so this is going to be on December 14th. It's going to be from 4 to 5.30. It's only $149. And Tim is going to be giving you his experience of what he is looking for at Tops. And, you know, you've heard him plenty of times, okay? He has a very unique way of looking at the marketplace and a very consistent way of looking at the marketplace. Tim Ord, what's going on, brother? All right. Um... Well, we, we can take a look at the equity markets, or we can take a look at the uh, gold market. I'm good for whatever you want. You just tell me where to go. All right, we'll, we'll just start with the chart, chart one. Okay. Uh, we're we're going to look at the bigger picture and kind of work backwards. Awesome. Okay. And, uh, so, kind of, yeah, you, you know, the bigger time frames rule the smaller time frame. So the the years rule the monthly, the monthly rule the weeklies, the uh, weeklies rule the dailies, and on down. Yes. So this chart here. Uh, it's actually the uh, equity put call ratio readings, and um, uh, the bottom window is the 21 day average. So that's like a month of put call ratio readings. Yes. And every time uh, this ratio is up around 75 or higher, we're 0.74 right now, so close enough. Yeah. And I marked those times going back to uh, 2000, mid 2014 with red lines and, and actually pink. Shaded I areas. see that. Yes, and and this ratio has been there since uh, you know I'm eyeballing. It's probably about June of this year, and we're still in the bullish range. The, the uh, next uh, that's the bottom window. The next higher window is the five day, which is only a week okay. worth of data. But the 21 uh, day or a month of data, uh, there's still enough puts out there uh, to drive the market higher. And so on the bigger time frame. So I don't think we're seeing a top here, uh, at least not yet, because the sentiment, which is what book call racial readings are, yes. are a sentiment indicator. You know, if we got up uh, or we got down around maybe 0.5 or 0.4, you know, you might be looking at a top. But we're still in the bullish area. So in my opinion, the market still can push higher on a sentiment type indicator. It doesn't really tie me where the highs and lows are but gives you the general trend of the market. Uh, uh, so the sentiment right now is still bullish, so the sentiment suggests the market still can move higher. So Yeah, these ratios you know, are so cool, Tim. And I, I, I can see this line. If you're watching Tiger TV, folks, you can see the red line coming right across it, man. It's pretty amazing, actually. And, you know, yeah. remember the, the program's archived, folks. So in your car, you know, just listen on the radio. Remember, you can go back and look at these charts because it's pretty amazing, man. Particularly, you know, you, you went back nine years here, man. It's it's pretty intense. Yeah, so yeah. It, it really looks at the bigger picture, and and really when the ratios on a point seven five on the twenty one day, if you look, it's never really been wrong. Um, yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm know, it, trust me, I can see it. Yeah, right, it's like crazy. Yeah, so it's, it's, right. it's a good indicator, I guess, to follow. I'll put it that way. Yes. So I kind of look at it. You don't have to look at it every day, but uh, it now is is it's saying something, so it's worth keeping in mind. Right. So it's, it's flipped to chart two. Okay. And uh, chart, we talked about this last week, I think. And anyhow, uh, it's a it's a, the top window is the NYSE summation index. Yes, and uh, it goes through a, a selling climax, then it needs to go to a buying climax to get an intermediate term low. And a selling climax, any reading below uh, seven hundred, and uh, the blue lines cross this chart. This chart goes back to two thousand seven. Are, are times uh, when the uh, uh, summation index fell below uh, 700. Okay. So, so okay. So now that's a selling climax. So, so now you got to have a buying climax. My uh, uh, the graphics I use on this chart. Sometimes those lines move a little bit, but in general, the, all those blue lines came right at the bottoms. Yes. I didn't quite line them up, some of them, but anyhow, they're pretty close. But right now, on October 27th, 
we had a uh, summation readings of minus 800 and change, 813, I think it was. So that was October 27th. To get a, a buying climax now, you need a buying clim- clim- climax to assume uh, another impulse wave to the upside starting. And that would be a rally to plus 1,000, and it should come in around two months. So October 27th, you had two months. December 27th, so this month, December 27th, you'd like to see the summation index reach plus 1,000. And if you do, that really bodes well for the intermediate term. The last time we got these readings came in, um, well, it came, well, the selling climax came at the October 2023 low. Then we had a buying climax, looks like the first part of January. So it was a little bit over two months. But if you now we are getting another one, that would actually add to the bullish scenario. Right. Uh, uh, I don't know if we'll get it or not. Do we really need it? We'd like to see it. Sure. But is it necessary? Maybe not. Uh, but you, know, you, know so cool, it, you know what's so you cool? You know what's so cool about this? lean pretty bullish. Right. And what's so cool, Tim, is that you know yeah yeah you're getting you know, as you're breaking all these different tools down that you you're, you're educating us on. It's so cool because there's just more confirmations, like you said. I mean, it, you know, yeah, it, it may do it, but if it does it, well, it's giving you a huge amount of information, man. Right. I mean, yeah, it gives give you more confidence on the, yes. on the trade. Right. Because, uh, you know, this is a bigger time frame, so we're going to actually, you know, we're looking at the bigger time frames now, so we're going to, as we go through these graphs, we're going to go down to the real small time frames. Right. And actually get down to the days and actually see where we are. But the summation index right now, as of yesterday, uh, was 400, was 398.38, okay. so basically 400. And we need to get to plus 1,000 by December 27th. we already gone from minus 800 to plus 400, so that's, what, 1,200 points? Yes. Uh, uh, for, what, about a, about a month and yeah. a couple of weeks? So reaching plus thousand by the 27th is really doable that would that would suggest the market would actually have to hold up here in general if not move higher over the next uh what three weeks whatever it is yes so yes. it kind of gives you a view of what to, to get if we have a crash here in the coming weeks that would spoil this whole setup right uh, right so uh, but but if the market kind of holds steady or moves higher uh or uh, then that would be bullish for for the bigger term. So now let's flip to um, chart number three. Okay. Now we're starting to go down to the smaller time frames. Bigger time frames look pretty good. So let's go down to the smaller time frames. The second window up from the bottom is a 10-day trend. Okay. Now you get a, you get a 10-day trend up around 1.2. That shows a lot of a panic in the market. And if you get down to around 0.9 or lower, we're, as when I did this chart, it was 0.94. And uh, so it's kind of on a short-term basis, not ideal here. Um, yeah, I hear your music. Awesome. Just wait so, one second. And folks, as uh, you know, Tim's going to be doing this workshop. If you want to understand what you're going to be looking for at, whether it's long-term tops, short-term tops, Bottom line, check it out. It's under featured content. It's going to be on December 14th. Tim and I are going to be right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Tim Owen to Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growling and prowling with us. Now, folks, okay, we have a lot of a lot of things happening at uh, TFNN uh, you know, over the holidays. Okay, we have the Target dollar sale going on. Uh, bottom line is that we got I mean, Mr. Tim Owen, which is on the line right now. He's going to be doing a workshop. And this workshop, you know, the first one he did was, you know, looking at bottoms. The second one, you know, you got all his experience from all of these years, and you know that he looks at it in a very unique way. And we're going through some of them right now. So check it out on the front page of TFNN. It's 4 to 5.30 Eastern Standard Time, December 14th, hour and a half. You're going to basically go through everything that you're going to be looking for on tops. Now, let's go take a look. I, I was on chat three, Tim, right, I think? Was it three? Yeah, chart three. Yep, yeah, chart three. So uh, anyhow, so the second window up from uh, the bottom is a ten-day trend, and we, we always talked about this in the past. Yes. And th this indicator is really good at picking out bottoms, fair at tops, but the red lines are on this chart. This chart goes back uh, looks like about two years or close to two years. Okay. Yeah. The red lines uh, are times when the ten-day trend is at point nine or lower. 
so it's not showing panic. But, you know, euphoria tops doesn't really actually produce a top, but panic always produces a bottom. Matter of fact, if you don't have panic in the market, you don't have a bottom. But you can have a, a top that's euphoric as far as the 10-day uh, trend's concerned. It can still go up. So this yeah, is not top, a top, key. You know, I'm glad you're, tr- yeah, I'm glad you're bringing this up, Tim, because tops are definitely different than bottoms, folks, okay? They, they can stretch for a longer period of time. Just as Tim's saying, you know, it, they're just different, man. And, you know, it's, it's pretty, yeah, it's, it's wild when you think about it, actually. But, yeah. Right. you, you got to actually use some different tools. And, yes. And uh, we'll, we'll cover that, actually, on our seminar or webinar. When yes. I, uh, 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 what, next, next Thursday. But anyhow, anyhow, so I marked the times on this chart when the uh, 10-day trend was at 0.9 or lower. Okay. And a lot of times it comes at highs. Uh, sometimes they're just short-term highs. And, uh, you know, just kind of a timeout. So we're at 0.94 as of uh, today. Uh, it'll be a little bit higher tomorrow. And that's kind of a danger zone. Uh, so it's, it's uh, you know, you're kind of, you know, it's not ideal. So can the market move higher? Yeah. Can it be a top here? Yeah. You know, so, you know, it's 50-50. So let's right. look to uh, chart number four. Okay. So you got the 10-day trend, 0.9. It's not ideal for a top, but it's, it's kind of leaning that way. Okay. So now this chart kind of looks a, a little bit on the bigger picture. So we're looking at the short term, but we're also keeping an eye on the, the year mid term. And so what it is, uh, you know, the bottom window, we'll start with that. Yes. The VIX. Okay. And when you got the, the VIX below 17, a lot of times you get a trending market or a bullish market. Yes. The trend will start to go up before the 90 you know, 95% of the time, the trend will, or the VIX will start to go up before the top actually happens. So normally you get a little correction, the VIX pops up, the market hits a newer high, and the VIX makes a lower high. And when that starts to happen, you know, several days in a row, if not longer, you're probably going into a top. Okay. So at this moment in time, we got the S&Ps pretty much matching its July high, and we got the uh, SPX VIX ratio. So that that flips the VIX um, upside down, I guess. Instead of the SPs going up, VIX going down, this ratio makes kind of mirrors the trend of the S and P. Yes, and it gives and it gives you a, a divergence where it could be a positive divergence or a negative divergence. But you know, if you look at the uh, 2022 high, which is that pink area there, you have the SPs making higher highs and this ratio making lower highs. That's a bearish divergence. And in the um, current high, which is a blue part right now, you got the SPs testing the July high, and you got this ratio making higher highs. Well, that's a bullish divergence. So I see. Ultimately, and we also got the VIX below 17. Right. Which is another kind of, kind of a bullish sign. So it looks pretty good. Wow, what you a know. great puzzle, man. <laughs> yeah, it is, it's, it's actually a puzzle. It is, so man. You, it's so awesome. So you got you yeah. to keep going and think, okay, right. what's going to go on? Right, well, right, right, man. There's nothing like a great so, picture, man. Holy cow. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> right. So so bigger trends up. Okay, let's get to really short term. Okay, okay, chart number five. Okay. Now, this, this, is, this chart is designed for short term. So if you get divergence going on, chances are short term, like within the next day or two or three, uh, you're going to have a reversal. If you go back, okay, the middle window is the TLT to the VVIX ratio. Yes. And that's the VIX of the VIX. This is not the VIX, but the VVIX. So it's the VIX of VIX. So the VIX of the VIX anticipates the VIX, but direction it's going to go. So if the VIX of the VIX starts going up, that means the VIX is going to, going to start going up. Yes. So is that, that confuse anybody? No, no, no. Yeah. That's I got it. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. So, and the TLT is the bond market. Right. So and so so I put the bond market in this, and the bond market has a, a big effect on the equity market. Oh yeah. So it has an impact. So I put those two together, and see how over time how it worked. Turns out it works pretty good. Uh, as a matter of fact, back in July on your program, I got out about a week before yes. uh, the S&Ps made that top in July, and I stayed out all the way into the bottom. Right. So, no, I actually I did trade that and goofed a couple things up, 
I, I made I lost two percent, made a little over. Yeah, I lost about one and a quarter percent on that decline, but the market went down ten percent. Right. So that was that was a win. But anyhow, uh, the reason why I got out back in July uh, time frame was because of this uh, chart because the, the uh, TLT VX ratio was making lower highs as this uh, SPYs was making higher highs. Well, going into the bottom of of uh, October, this ratio was going straight up, and the, and the market was going straight down, and I it got in the low. Now we're going up again in, in the current time frame here over the last couple of weeks. We're kind of chattering up here. And, and you know, Tim, like I don't mean to interrupt you, but that that was but, a dynamite trade when you got out there. I mean, because you know the S and P's, what well, we we were almost at forty six hundred, and we all went all the way down to what forty. 150 or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was, that was a, a, a great trade, you know. So I'm out. So I'm wanted, you know, so I'm, I'm seeing the reason why I got out was because of this ratio. Yes. The uh, TLT to VIX ratio. You know, we're starting making higher highs on the S&Ps. Not a lot higher highs, but we're kind of chattering up. Well, this ratio is going down. Matter of fact, last Friday we hit a new high on the S&Ps, and I wasn't, too worried that, that that rally was going to go because the ratio is making lower highs. Right. Uh, I can see it so right now, now. Right. Yeah. So, so now we got a bearish divergence. Right. So, and we got a gap, uh, which is that blue area. I got labeled gap there. Yeah. Right around the four 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 area, which is about a thirty eight point two percent retracement. Yeah. And so, have, have I got a sell signal yet? No, not yet. And we'll talk about that. Uh, right after, right after, we I come back. We're going to have music coming up here. No, totally. Seconds, and you but. know, you know, it's cool. You know, it's cool, Tim. I just had Basil on, and he was talking about the uh, SMHs, right? Well, what did happen, folks? I'll put the SMHs up right now. You know, the SMHs, Tim, they were weaker, and they filled the whole gap. If you look at the SMHs, right to the tick. Pretty amazing. The wow. last two days, they came right down to the exact gap that we're talking about on the S and P as well as the Nasdaq. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I come right back. Welcome back, folks. Tim with Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. We are right now on the TLT VVIX chart, Tim. All right. Uh, let's flip to chart six. Okay. Real quick. Yep. Uh, chart six. Okay. Here's the, here's the day. Uh, last Friday, uh, which is that blue area down to the volume yes. um, there. And with that's high volume. And, and most, not all, high volume highs are tested. So I'm thinking we're going to test Friday's high, and if we last Friday's high. If we do so on lighter volume, that may be my trigger that it actually possibly gets short. I see. Okay. The, the gap, and that's what yep. I'm kind of looking for. So if we got it, we got a trend right now, 1.40 or something close to it, and so we may get a bounce here over the next couple of days, and so I'll have to watch. You know how that price yeah. high is tested. We're tested, say on at least ten percent lighter volume, preferably twenty or thirty percent lighter volume. Um, then that may be you enough for me to get short, yeah. right? For well, not a rocket trade or a no, but trade, I, I but get it. I get it. Gap. Yep, exactly. So that's that's my setup. I don't know if we'll we'll get it. We'll have to wait and see. Nice. Um, we got one more chart. That's yep, just, there it is. I got it. Go ahead. Right. This. This is a momentum chart, and it works really well what the bigger time frame is going to do. These signals in between these lines are, are, uh, are sell signals for the red and blue signals for the uh, buy signals. And all it is is the monthly cumulative up-down volume and advanced line indicators on a monthly time frame. So they measure the up volume and down volume, advanced decline. And to get a signal, you need to close above the mid-Bollinger Band. Okay. When you get a close above these mid Bollinger bands, they're multi month, even sometimes multi year type indicators because they're they're uh, momentum indicators on volume and momentum in indicators on on advanced declines. So if this happens, which we think it probably will over the next month, is the monthly volume or the monthly chart. Uh, it could be a multi, at least a multi month. Uh, rally, not a multi-year rally. And I love it. Well, listen, man, I appreciate the education, Tim. You have a great one, a safe one, and we look forward to speaking to you on Thursday. All right. Love Thank you. you. Always remember, folks, the bank and client hide out the book and run you over, and thank God there's always another trade. Have a great one and a safe one, folks.